Hey, what's going on everybody? How's it going? How y'all doing today? Welcome back. So for today, the reason why I'm making this video in particular is because not too long ago, I did a non-spoiler review for a foreign film on Netflix called The Sun. So as usual, I tried to give away as few plot points and as few story details as humanly possible because I think it's better when you're as surprised as you can be when you're watching a film. So I just kind of offer my thoughts and then people can decide for themselves whether or not they want to take the time to watch it or whether they don't want to. And normally on my videos, the comment section is just like, oh, good review, bad review, I agree, disagree, so on and so forth. People just give their general thoughts also. But if you go to check out the comments section on that video in particular, it's almost 100% across the board. Everybody wants to talk about the ending. Like, everybody has theories about it. Everybody has different interpretations about it. And a couple people just suggested, hey, why don't you just do a completely separate video and just talk about the ending? Because that's really what we are here to talk about. So I guess this is just one of those movies where the ending of the film just kind of makes or breaks whatever you may or may not feel about it. So that's what we're here to talk about today. So that being said, if you have not seen The Sun, we are going to get into it. I personally recommend that you go and watch it because I very much enjoyed it. I like the ending, but I'll let you guys decide for yourselves whether or not you think it was good, bad, or whatever you might think about it. So there you go. You've all been warned, so let's get into it. And if you're watching this, you've probably seen the movie, so I don't need to explain the plot. However, I'm going to run through the second half of the movie just for the sake of clarity. So at one point, Lorenzo accidentally hurts Sigrid when he takes Henrik to the doctor against her will, and then he has that whole 90-day restraining order thing. After the 90 days, he goes to visit Henrik, and when he sees the baby, he thinks that it's been swapped out, and this is not the real Henrik, that there's an imposter baby. Then he has his little freak out, and then the police come and there's a bit of a scuffle and then cut to a little bit later where him and Sigrid are sitting there with their lawyers. And in that meeting, Lorenzo makes a deal so that he can have Henrik for a day. And during that day, he takes him to his friend, the married couple's house, Renato and Giulietta, I believe their names are. So while the baby is at their house, that's when Lorenzo sneaks out. He tries to go back to his old home where Sigrid and the old Norwegian midwife live. Then Lorenzo breaks into his old house. He goes towards a cradle and then he hears baby noises. And it's at that point that Sigrid shows up with a rifle. Then she shoots and kills Lorenzo. Then later on, Giulietta and Renato try and return the alleged Henrik back to the home and they find, you know, that Lorenzo's been shot and killed. Then they find out Sigrid and the midwife have all have fled. They've, they're gone. And since Giulietta and Renato are Henrik's godparents, they take the baby and then it cuts to two years later. And at that time, Giulietta sees the Norwegian lady, recognizes her, and then follows her to the house. And then we see Giulietta getting even closer to the house and then you see Sigrid kind of putting up at, like her laundry to dry. Then we see Sigrid and the midwife walk into the house and Giulietta decides to peer in through one of the basement windows. Then after she kind of like opens up the fabric, she can also hear a baby cooing voice and you see a look on her face and then the movie cuts to black. Now, some people hate that ending. Some people love that ending. I love that ending because I just thought it was like, wow. In my opinion, it allowed for the entire story to conclude, but it also allowed you as the viewer to imagine what exactly is going to happen next. I'm going to talk about my personal thoughts later on, but for right now, let's get into some of the theories that some of the commenters have left. Now, the first thing I'm going to say is pretty easily debunked, in my opinion. A lot of people, or a couple people, have said that there's a possibility that there's a twin, and I can say for sure that this is definitely false, because you'll see Lorenzo goes on a few of the gynecological slash OBGYN visits, as well as the fact that he's also there for a couple of the ultrasounds, and if there was two heartbeats, the doctor there would have said something. And also considering the fact that Sigrid is a way, way overprotective mother and she already had a miscarriage, I feel like if she had one baby, two, or even seven babies, she would be equally as protective of all of them. So that kind of doesn't make sense that she would just kind of like push aside one of the babies. So that theory is kind of out the window at this point. The next two theories actually have to do with uh, cloning in some way, shape, or form. And if you really, really, really want to go crazy, I guess you could have that as a theory. But in the context of the film, to me, that makes literally zero sense. And in this instance, when I'm speaking about context, it means that there was no setup for that. There was no mention of that. So it would just seem like way, way, way out of left field and wouldn't really make sense for the story. So like, say, for example, I told you I watched a sports game and I told you that the final score of the game was 13 to 3. Now, that's not a lot of information. And if I just told you that score, that could mean one of a hundred different things because you have no context for what it means. However, if I throw the context at you that that was the score of a basketball game, you would think to yourself, wow, that's the worst fucking basketball game ever because that's got to be probably one of the lowest scores ever in the history of the sport, right? But inversely, if I were to tell you that that was the score of a professional ice hockey game or a world football game, then you would be like, wow, that's a crazy high scoring game. That must have been really, really exciting. But the 100% truth of the matter is that 13 to 3 was the final score in the last Super Bowl here in America. So that being said, in the context of this film in particular, the idea of cloning really doesn't hold water because the whole idea behind cloning was not presented in any way, shape or form throughout the movie. And also this is not a science fiction movie. So I, the idea of cloning is just wild 
wildly, wildly out there. So the main idea behind cloning is really implausible. And then somebody else posed the theory that they could have been trying to clone Hitler solely because the film takes place in Argentina. And as I said before, cloning does not work in the context of this theory. Neither does the whole idea behind Hitler or Nazis or anything related to that because there was no mention of that throughout the entire movie. And that's pretty much it for some of the theories that were in the comment section. The last thing I'd like to mention is that somebody commented uh, and their name on the comments was DX. Some of the commenters mentioned some curiosity about Sigrid and the Norwegian midwife because there is some uh, dialogue that is in Norwegian in the film that there's no subtitles for. And I don't have the full comment in front of me, but DX claims to be somebody from Norway who knows how to speak Norwegian. And according to DX, apparently most of the dialogue throughout the movie is just very, very, very menial, unimportant dialogue. Like when is the taxi coming or how long is this, that, and the other. So just very normal talk. However, also according to this person, the last lines you hear in the movie from what we perceive to be the baby in the basement is, I am hungry, why do you let me be alone? So assuming that DX is honest and being forthright, thank you very much for your contribution because several people were asking for what those Norwegian words meant. And secondly, some people might think that that li last line in the movie means something. I personally don't think it adds anything to the story because if it did, I feel like the filmmakers would have made a subtitle for that because it would have been something important. Now, after having said all that, all those theories, all those interpretations, blah, 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 here's my thoughts in general. I believe that there is a correct and an incorrect way to interpret this story because the entire mystery of the movie kind of revolves around Lorenzo because he has a history of drinking, mental illness, maybe he's seeing things that aren't there. So he could just be, it could just be a mind fuck. So when he breaks back into his house and he hears the baby noises, but the camera doesn't show you the baby actually. So you're just hearing noises as an audience member. And then Sigrid shows up with a rifle because like there's a trespasser in her house. So obviously she's going to shoot the person. Plus she has issues with the father. She's not a big fan of him. But then two years later when they do the jump forward and Juliet is following the midwife back to that house, it's a completely different scenario because for the majority of the movie, you're following Lorenzo and you're watching, or you're kind of seeing things through his eyes essentially. So when he hears the baby after he breaks into the basement, that could be his brain just going ape shit and that might be fake. However, my interpretation is that later when Julieta is like peering through that like felt or whatever fabric that is to look into the basement of the new house. So now at this point, we're no longer at Lorenzo's perspective, which could be potentially skewed if he is mentally ill. We're coming from the perspective of Julieta. And in the movie, Julieta is 100% sane. And when she hears the baby, that is a big clue to me that that is, that that is the actual Henrik that she is hearing. So having said that, it's not just Lorenzo that hears the baby's voices, it's also Julieta, which means that from multiple different perspectives, there is an actual Henrik and the baby that her and Renato have at the end, that's an imposter baby and we that's the one thing that I wasn't totally sure of. Because in my non-spoiler review, that was the one th like big plot hole that I didn't think got explained that could have been very easily explained because that is the ultimate question. If Sigurd actually has Henrik, then who the hell is Renato and Julieta's baby? Like, where did that baby come from? Who is it? Like, that's where all the questions come in. But to be fair, I don't, I haven't memorized every single frame of the movie. So for all I know, there could have been a news headline or somebody could have said a word about the fact that, oh, there was a kid that got kidnapped recently. Because that's where my mind goes immediately is that either Sigrid or maybe she hired the midwife to do it is that they kidnapped a kid at some point and then they use that kid as like a decoy version of Henrik. Like that was my interpretation. And as far as uh, the overall meaning behind the film, I think it's mostly a tale about not just helicopter parenting, but like obsessive parenting. And I also want to say that uh, some of Lorenzo's paintings, I feel like there's some metaphors in there that I'm just not picking up on. And it's mostly the two paintings, like one of them is a shell and I feel like that is like some type of resemblance to a womb in some way. And then there's also another painting of like a guy that's eating the head of a child or something. I'm not sure what that signifies, but I feel like that has to mean something in the context of the story. But again, this is a movie about an overprotective mother that is, I would say protective to a fault. And I think that is the, the fault of some parents in my opinion, because I'm sure everybody knows someone or has heard a story about someone who is just way, way, way too in control by their parents. Like their parents just tell them what to do. They control every aspect of their life because they, I don't know, maybe it's just to tackle some type of insecurities. I'm not sure. And again, this is just my opinion. This is just my interpretation. If you have any theories or any thoughts, as usual, hop in the comments, let me know. But yeah, anyway, guys, um, that's pretty much it. Those are my thoughts on the ending. Um, hopefully you guys got something out of it. And hopefully some of you out there with your own little theories, hopefully this maybe gave you a little bit more insight. Maybe you think about it a little differently, or maybe you think the movie's a little better. But if you like the movie less, then that's okay too. Everybody, we all like different stuff, so it's whatever. I still maintain that I really enjoyed the ending because if it had ended a minute sooner, it wouldn't have had that holy sh** factor at the end. I did, however, think a couple things could have been differently in the movie. Like at the end when Julieta goes to that house, I think any normal person would probably have called the cop 
cops after she saw Sigrid. Like, that's what I would have done. And she's a lawyer, so I feel like it would be very easy for her to do that. But for the sake of, like, the holy sh** factor at the end, I can see why they didn't do that. Another thing that also could have happened is Lorenzo could have broke back into his house and taken a picture of the actual Henrik. I felt like... You know, he could have done that and that would have saved a few things. But again, we also wouldn't have that crazy holy shit part at the end. But again, thank you guys for watching. I still enjoy this movie. I still recommend it to people. But you guys can think for yourself whatever you want to think about it. And as usual, guys, if you like this review, give me a like, subscribe, share, hit the bell, do all that other youtube type of shit. Thank you for watching and I will catch you guys next time.